Now we will begin a discussion on the first reaction that we will be talking about during general chemistry. And this is called a precipitation reaction. These are also called double substitution reactions. This occurs when you take two different solutions of soluble ionic compounds, you mix them, they recombine to form a soluble ionic compound, and then an insoluble ionic compound compound and it's this insoluble ionic compound that forms a precipitate which just means a solid and that's going to be considered our product of our reaction so we mix these two solutions together in the beginning they're both soluble and then when we're done mixing them a solid forms in this case if we were to recombine these soluble ionic compounds and we don't form an insoluble compound really there is no reaction so all we're doing is mixing two soluble compounds together unless we form a precipitate, unless we form an insoluble ionic compound, really there is no reaction. So let's look at an example. And here in the beginning, what we're going to focus on is determining what are going to be the products of our reaction. So if we know that a precipitate forms, how do we determine what that precipitate is? So here's an example and we're taking two aqueous solutions of soluble salts. So our first soluble salt is sodium sulfide. Our second soluble salt is iron three chloride. These are mixed and a solid forms. And really our question is, what is the molecular formula of this solid that has formed? Really what we want to get to is an overall bounced reaction equation. So sodium sulfate and iron three chloride mixed together to form two products. We wanna know what those two products are and then we want to bounce the equation. The first thing that we want to determine is what is the molecular formula of our product. To determine this, the first thing we do is look at the ions that are made when our starting materials disassociate. So sodium sulfide disassociates to make Na plus and S2 minus. So here, even though that there is a subscript two, really what this is going to disassociate into is sodium plus. And so the subscript 2 will come into play later when we balance the reaction. Iron 2 chloride disassociates to make iron 2 plus and Cl minus. And what happens when we mix an aqueous solution of these two soluble salts is these ions have a chance to recombine. And by that we mean that the positive and negatively charged species can react to form two new products. So by that we're taking the positive from one and the negative from the other and the positive from one and the negative from the other to make two new ionic species. One of the most important things when we make these new ionic species is to make sure that the charges cancel out from each other. And this is something that we talked about quite a bit when we were drawing compounds during nomenclature. In this case, our new combination is Na plus and Cl minus. Na plus and Cl minus has the same charge, so they will be combined in a one-to-one -one ratio to make NaCl. With iron two plus and sulfur two minus, their charges are the same, so they will combine to make iron two sulfide. So both of these will be combined into one-to-one -one ratio. These are our new products. So we've taken the ions from our starting material, we've recombined them, and in the recombined form, they show our two products of this reaction. The first one is sodium chloride. The second one is iron two sulfide. So here it is a very common mistake to not disassociate ions completely. So here, instead of saying that sodium sulfide disassociates to make sodium, it's very common to say that it disassociates to make Na2 plus two. So they do not disassociate the sodium completely. They keep it as Na2. Also, they do the same thing with Cl2. They disassociate it as Cl2 minus. And the idea here is if you do this mistake, you would have a product of Na2Cl2. And so this is incorrect. So you need to make sure that during disassociation, the only species with subscripts should be polyatomic. So here, Na2 2 plus is not a polyatomic. We know that it is not correct. So after disassociation, the only thing that should have subscripts are polyatomics. And if it's not a polyatomic, you've probably done something wrong. So now that we have our two reaction products, the next thing that we want to do is determine which one will be the precipitate. Here, sodium chloride is mentioned in the rule one, and it says that NaCl is going to be soluble because Na is a group one metal. 
And also if you look, iron to sulfide is expected to be insoluble. So our product is iron to sulfide. Our iron to sulfide is going to get a subscript S to imply that it is a solid in our reaction. Every other ionic compound other than our product will get this subscript aqueous, which shows that it is soluble. The next step is you balance the reaction. So we have taken our reactants, recombined them to make the products. And then in the last step, you want to balance the reaction. So here, all we needed to do is put a stoichiometric two in front of sodium chloride. And we've discussed how to balance these kinds of reactions in previous sections. One of the things you want to remember when you get to the balancing stage, if you have trouble balancing, so if it seems like the reaction cannot be balanced, you've made some mistakes somewhere. And typically those mistakes involve not disassociating the ions or giving ions an incorrect charge. So let's look at a slightly more complex example. Here I want to draw a balanced reaction for the interaction of these two soluble salts, sodium carbonate and iron 3 nitrate. Once again, I want to determine what our product is, our precipitate. We begin by looking at what ions are created when we disassociate our two soluble salts. Sodium carbonate disassociates to make Na plus and CO3 2 minus carbonate. Iron 3 nitrate disassociates to make Fe3 plus and nitrate. Once again, when we're done with the disassociation, the only thing that should have subscripts is polyatomic. So here, carbonate, that's okay. Nitrate, that's okay because they're both polyatomics. Any other species with a subscript has probably been incorrectly disassociated. Now that we have these new ions, they can recombine to form the products of our reaction. So you take the positive from one, the negative from the other, the positive from one, and the negative from the other. Here we're taking Na plus and NO3 minus. These are going to recombine because they have the same charge. They're going to come together in a one-to-one -one mole ratio and make sodium nitrate. However, Fe3 plus and CO3 2 minus, because their charges are not the same, we are going to have to combine them a specific ratio such that our product has no charge. In this case, our product is going to be iron 3 carbonate. So how did we come up with this product? Kind of a simple trick is to remember when combining ions of unequal charges, the charges tend to become the subscript on the opposite ion. By that we mean we are mixing Fe3 plus and CO3 2 minus. In our end product, this three on our ion becomes a subscript three for carbonate. So the charge on one ion becomes the subscript on the other. Here, carbonate, CO3, 2 minus, the charge is a 2, so inside of our product, the other ion, iron, gets a subscript 2. This is a very simple trick, however, when we're done, there is no overall charge left. We have 2 plus 3 charged ions, so the total positive charge for our product is plus 6, and then we have 3 negatively 2 charged carbonates, so our total negative charge is minus 6. So overall, this product has a neutral charge. The ions are plus 6, the carbonates are minus 6. So this topic was covered in greater detail during the nomenclature section where we talked about drawing the molecular formula of a ionic compound from a name. Now that we know what our two products are, sodium nitrate and iron 3 carbonate, the next thing we want to do is determine which one of our two products is going to be the solid. When we look, our two products, sodium nitrate and iron 3 carbonate, sodium nitrate is listed in group one as being soluble. Iron 3 carbonate is listed as being insoluble. So we know that iron 3 carbonate is going to be our solid, so it gets a subscript S. Everything else is considered soluble, and so it gets a subscript of AQ. The next step that we need to do is bounce the reaction, and we have done that in previous sections. So here is the bounce reaction that occurs when we mix aqueous solutions of sodium carbonate and iron-3 nitrate.